Text number four.
हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Chapter 10 means the opulences of the absolute. Buddhya jnana masamoha Buddhya jnana masamoha You should get books. We like everyone to participate. Right? If you have a book to look at. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Everybody has the verse. Okay. Buddhir gyanam asamoha. Shama satyam damasama. Shama satyam damasama. Shama satyam damasama. Shama satyam damasama. Sukam dukam. Bavo Bavo Sukam Dukam Bavo Bavo Bayam Chapayam Evacha Bayam Chapayam Evacha Baya Chapayam Evacha Bayam Chapayam Evacha Ahimsa Samata Tushtis Ahimsa Samata Tushtis Ahimsa samata tushtis. Ahimsa samata tushtis. Apodanam yasho yasha. Apodanam yasho yasha. Apodanam yasho yasha. Apodanam yasho yasha. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Bhavanti bhava bhutanam. Mata eva pritagveda. Mata eva pritagveda. Mata eva pritagveda. Mata eva pritagveda. Budhir Jnana Masamoha Budhir Jnana Masamoha Shama Satyam Damashama Shama Satyam Damashama Sukham Dukham Bhavo Bhavo Sukham Dukham Bhavo Bhavo Vayam Chapayam Evacha Vayam Chapayam Evacha Samata Tushti Ahimsa Samata Tushti Tapo Danam Yasho Yasha Tapo Danam Yasho Yasha Avanti Baba Bhutanam Avanti Baba Bhutanam Mata Eva Pritagveda Mata Eva Pritagveda Chen? Pani Patri Buddhir jnana masamoha Buddhir jnana masamoha Shama satyam dama shama Shama satyam dama shama Sukham dukham bhavo bhavo Sukham dukham bhavo bhavo Mayam chabhyam chabhayam evacha Mayam chabhayam evacha Ahimsa samata tushtis Ahimsa samata tushtis Tapo dhanam yasho yasha Tapo dhanam yasho yasha Mavanti bhava bhutana Mavanti bhava bhutana Matta eva pridhak vidha Matta eva pridhak vidha Budhir Gyanam Asamoha Budhir Gyanam Asamoha Shama Satyam Dhamma Shama Shama Satyam Dhamma Shama Sukham Dukham Bhavo Bhavo Sukham Dukham Bhavo Bhavo Bhayam Cha Bhayam Eva Cha Bhayam Cha Bhayam Eva Cha Ahimsa Samata Tushtis Ahimsa Samata Tushtis Tapo Dhanam Yasho Yasha Tapo Dhanam Yasho Yasha Bhavanti Bhava Bhutanam Bhavanti Bhava Bhutanam Matta Eva Pridhak Vidha Matta Eva Pridhak Vidha Vaishnavis Bhakti Bhava Asa 
непричинение вреда, уравновешенность, удовлетворенность, аскетичность, щедрость, слава и бесславие – все эти разнообразные качества живых существ созданы мной одним. Комментарий. Все многообразие качеств живых существ, перечисленных здесь, хороших и плохих, создано Кришной. Разумом называют способность понимать истинную природу вещей, а знанием – понимание того, что есть дух и что есть материя. Обычное знание, которое люди получают в университетах, распространяется только на материальные вещи и потому не может считаться истинным. Обладать знанием – значит понимать, чем дух отличается от материи. Современная система образования не дает людям знания о духе. Она просто учит их манипулировать материальными элементами и удовлетворять свои физические потребности. Поэтому академическое знание нельзя считать полным. Shri Chaitanya Manomishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Svaya Krupata Brahmaryam Dadavi Svapada Tikam Bandeha Shri Guru Shri Yatrapada Kamam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Savayatam Savadutam Parijana Sajam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Vadanuta Sajana Valita Shri Shakam Vitam Shyam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Nima Bhattu Jagapate, Gopishtha Bhutikra Kanta, Radha Kanta Namastute, Apta Kanchkana Gorange, Jali Vinda Vishwari, Vishra Bharam Sudhadevi, Rana Mani Hari Priye, Vanchakarapata rupyasya, Dripa sindhu pyaevacha, Vajita nam pavane gyo, Vaishna vibhyo namo nama, Jai Shri Krishna Jai Manya, Rao Nityananda, Shri Advaita Vadarmara, Shivasthani Gopra Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Lord Krishna is describing different qualities which he has created. Итак, Господь Кришна описывает различные качества, которые Он создал. Some are good and some are bad. Некоторые из них хорошие, некоторые плохие. So everything comes from Lord Krishna. We have to understand everything comes. Not only the good, the bad also comes. Все исходит из Господа Кришны. Мы должны это понять. Не только хорошее, но также и плохое. Prabhupada was asked one time, why is there evil in the world? Однажды Прабхупаду спросили, почему на земле существует зло. Он говорит, зло исходит из спины Господа. С лица Господа, то есть в переднего части, исходят добрые качества, хорошие качества. So Lord Krishna begins his description by mentioning first of all knowledge. И Господь Кришна начинает описание, упомянув в первую очередь знание. Итак, первое качество, которое он упоминает, это разум. So intelligence is part of the subtle body. Разум является частью тонкого тела. Right? We have a gross physical body, but we have a subtle body, which is made up of the mind. 
the intelligence and the ego. So intelligence is higher than the mind. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that the senses are superior to matter, but the mind is higher than the senses and intelligence is higher than the mind. Разум находится выше ума. И Господь Кришна описывает в Бхагавадите, что ум находится э, выше чувств, а разум находится выше ума. So we all have some intelligence. Everyone, even the animals, the little plants, they also have some intelligence. И каждый обладает разумом. В какой-то степени даже животные и растения также обладают разумом. Generally, the, the different living entities, they will use their intelligence just for eating and sleeping and mating and defending. You can see how the animals are very intelligent sometimes. I know in Mayapur, in Mayapur, if you sit and eat prasadam, the dog will come and the dog will sit very nicely in front of you, but just looking and waiting to get some of your prasadam. И в Майяпуре, если вы начнете кушать проса, то вы увидите, что подойдет какая-нибудь собака, сядет так миленько перед вами и будет смотреть жалобными глазами, пока вы не дадите просад. And similarly, monkeys are very intelligent. They will steal. If they see that in Vrindavan, they will steal your glasses. И также обезьяны очень разумные существа. Во Вриндаване они воруют очки. Or they will steal your shoe. Или шу? Yeah, they will take your shoes. Или ботинки. Because we leave the shoes outside the temple. So the monkeys will come and take the shoes, or one of the shoes from outside the temple. And how to get the shoe back? The monkey's up on the roof with your shoe. И как же вернуть ботинок? Обезьяна он высоко на крыше с твоим с вашим ботинком. They know that if you want the shoe back, you have to give them some food, then you get the shoe back. Yeah, they понимают, что если вы хотите вернуть ботинок, то вам придется дать им что-то поесть. Тогда они вам его вернут. So these animals, they also have intelligence. Так эти животные также обладают разумом. But they're using their intelligence just for eating and sleeping and mating and defending. Но они используют свой разум для еды, обороны. Even the plants, you will see the plants and the, the trees, how they grow, that they will grow in such a way that they can get the sunshine. They move towards the light, they want to enjoy the rays of the sun. Они тянутся к солнечному свету, они хотят наслаждаться солнечным светом. And their roots will spread through the ground so that they can take the water from the earth. So, so the plants also have some intelligence. But human species is special. Of all this 8,400,000 species, the human life is special. Because it's only in the human life that we can use our intelligence to inquire about the purpose of our life. Потому что только в человеческой форме жизни мы можем использовать разум для того, чтобы задавать вопросы о смысле жизни. The animals and the plants, the other species, they can never inquire about the purpose of life. Животные, растения, другие живые существа, они не вопрошают. Their intelligence is limited to the four activities. Их разум ограничен направлен на четыре вида этой на эти четыре вида деятельности. 
But human beings have the special facility, that special opportunity that they can inquire about life. Но человеческие создать человеческое существо обладает особыми возможностями и способностями, чтобы вопрошать о цели жизни. So it's it's up to the human being to take advantage of the human form of life. И воспользуется ли человек преимуществом человеческой жизни зависит от него самого. Если мы не используем свой разум для того, чтобы достичь с помощью него высшей цели жизни, то в следующей жизни мы родимся, воплотимся в животной форме. Если мы если мы не используем человеческую жизнь должным образом, то мы получаем потом животную форму тела. And sometimes even you have to become a plant or a tree. Иногда приходится даже воплощаться в растениях или деревьях. Then you have to stand with your feet in the ground and tolerate all the conditions. И приходится стоять на земле и терпеть все очень сложно существовать в низших формах жизни, так как очень много страданий. Человеческая жизнь особенная, у нас есть особое преимущество. But with facilities means you have more responsibility. Но с этими же преимуществами у нас также больше ответственности. Just like the highly, the, maybe somebody works for the government, and maybe they have a, a big position in the government. Может быть, кто-то из вас работал на правительство и у него было высокое положение. Any government, not just Russia, any government. Любое правительство, если взять, не только в России. But you work for the government. The government will take care of you. They'll give you a nice house. They'll give you maybe they give you even a car. And maybe they give you even servants. If, например, работаете на правительство, особое положение, то правительство вас заботится, они обеспечивают вас дом, может быть даже машиной, может быть даже услугами. So they are given a lot of benefits, but with, with these benefits, they have also responsibility. They have duties. Получается с этими же благами, преимуществами. Мы приобретаем очень большое количество ответственности. They have to make sure that all of their work is done very nicely and that there's no inefficiency. И нужно быть уверенным, что работа выполняется очень хорошо и она эффективна. They have to make sure that there's a profit made by their work. И они должны быть уверены, что благодаря их работе получают прибыль. And they have to justify in getting these facilities. So similarly, in the human body, we have responsibility. And that responsibility is to use our intelligence properly. To use our intelligence to inquire, to ask, like, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? If we do not make these kind of inquiries, then we have wasted the human form of life. Если мы не задаем эти вопросы, то мы попусту, просто напросто попусту тратим время в человеческой форме жизни. So we have to understand the, the proper use of intelligence. Uh, we give the example that the, 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 the senses are like the horses on the chariot. Do you ride a horse? Any of you ride horses? 
you ride a horse, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, you know that they have, you have to hold tightly, you know, they can be very powerful. Their horses have a lot of energy. So you could imagine if you're driving a chariot and you have four or five horses pulling the chariot. Вы можете представить себе, если вы управляете колесницей, вам приходится управлять четырьмя лошадьми, которые не запряжены. Can be quite difficult to control the chariot. Очень тяжело управлять, контролировать колесницу. So the senses, it's difficult to control five senses. Итак, чувства сложно контролировать пять чувств. Right? Which which senses are most difficult to control? Какое чувство сложнее всего контролировать? Tongue. Yes, the tongue. Yeah. Our tongue likes to eat. Наш язык любит кушать. We like to eat all kinds of, sometimes the wrong kinds of food. Мы любим покушать иногда даже какую-то неправильную пищу. And we use our tongue also to speak. Также мы используем язык для того, чтобы говорить. And sometimes we will speak things which are not very nice also. И также мы иногда говорим неприятные вещи. We have to learn to control the senses. Нам нужно научиться контролировать чувства. So how do we control the senses? Higher than the senses is the mind. И как мы контролируем чувства? Разум выше чувств. So in the chariot, the mind is compared to the reins on the horses. И в колеснице разум сравнивают с погодями. The mind is higher than the senses. It gives a direction to the senses. Um, mind is compared, is compared, ah, um, в колеснице ум сравнивают с погодами, и ум контролирует чувства. The mind tells the, the tongue what to say or what to eat. И ум говорит языку, что есть и что говорить. So, the mind is like the reins, and then higher than the mind is the intelligence. Ум выше чувств. And the intelligence is like the driver on the chariot. The driver has a big responsibility. He has to control these horses. So driver is a very important person. And who is the passenger on the chariot? That is the soul. The soul is like a passenger. He gets on the chariot. And of course the soul tells the driver where he wants to go. So the soul gives the information to the desire of the soul is communicated to the driver, to the intelligence. And the, the chariot, the chariot is like a body. So in this way we understand the relationship between the body, the soul, the mind, the intelligence, the senses. И таким образом мы понимаем отношения. Мы можем понять отношения между телом, душой, умом, разумом и чувствами. Мы должны использовать разум должным образом. How we, we have to direct the, the driver. But well, the intelligence is the driver. We have to direct the horses to the proper destination. Мы должны направлять лошадь, лошадей к нужной цели. So intelligence is something which we can cultivate by hearing from the scriptures. By hearing from the scriptures, we will get knowledge. Knowledge is the second quality mentioned by Lord Krishna. Знание – это второе качество, упомянутое Господом Кришной. First he says intelligence, and then he says knowledge. Сначала он называет разум, затем 
knowledge and knowledge in Sanskrit is called jnana. На санскрите знание звучит гьяна. But there's another word which is vigya. Есть еще другое слово вигьяна. Just like you have your Russian sannyasi guru Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj. Есть в России саньяси гуру Бхакти Вигьян Махарадж. So Vigyan means realization. Vigyan означает творение в жизнь. Vigyan is the ability to apply knowledge. Вигьяна означает способность применять знания. When you get knowledge, when you get some knowledge, you have to know how to use it. Когда вы получаете какое-то знание, вы должны понимать, как использовать его. Just like we go to school, they may give you some theory about something, and then you will go into the laboratory and you do the experiment. Когда мы, например, входим в школу, мы получаем какое-то теоретическое знание, но затем в лаборатории мы проводим эксперименты. The theory may say that you have a base that if you mix two substances together, you will get a reaction. И теоретическое знание может гласить, если вы смешаете две жидкости вместе, у вас будет реакция. Just like you want to make water, maybe you can bring hydrogen and oxygen together. So that's a theory, but Vigyan is how to do it. So Srila Prabhupada talks how real knowledge is to understand the difference between matter and spirit. Knowledge is described later in the Bhagavad Gita in chapter 13. Knowledge is to understand what is matter what is the body and what is the soul? No, знание это понимание, что такое душа и что что является душой, что является телом. So this knowledge is not given in the colleges or in the schools or in the universities. Это знание вы не получите ни в школе, ни в университете. The modern education system only give us knowledge about matter. Современное Система образования дает нам знания только о материи. Education today is just a good business. Образование сегодня это просто хороший бизнес. It's not working. Не работает? Его отключили, эхо идет. It's echo. So, education. I show real edu the modern education system just teaches people about matter, how to deal with the material elements. Mind is included in the material element. But real knowledge is to understand what is matter and what is spirit. Что такое дух и что такое материя? People identify with the body because they don't know about the real soul. Люди отождествляют себя с телом, потому что они не знают, что такое настоящая душа. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes it's very rare for people to know about the soul. И Бхагавад Гити Кришна говорит, что те, кто знают, имеют знание о душе, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, "Of thousands among men, only one is endeavoring for perfection." And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So first of all. To understand the self, to understand the soul. I'm, I'm quoting a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Out of thousands among men, only one is endeavoring for perfection. 
and of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. И только или те, кто достиг совершенства, только один может истинно познать меня. Manushyanam sahasrishu kaschid yatati sadayi yatatam api sadanam kaschid mam veti. So siddha, siddhi, perfection. People who have come to perfection are very few. That perfection is usually maybe to understand the Brahman, to know that I'm not the body. They may know the, they may know about the soul, but they don't know about the super soul. Они могут знать о душе, но они не могут не иметь представления о сверхдуше. And they simply understand themselves to be a soul. Они просто понимают, что они души. And they never thought that there's another soul within the body. There's two souls in the body. One is the super soul. Они не понимают, что есть еще одна душа в теле, которая находится в теле, сверхдуша. So these people, they're often called impersonalists. И таких людей часто обычно называют имперсоналистами. Because they say ultimately we're all one. Потому что они говорят, что мы, что все едино. So their knowledge is not perfect. Их знание не совершенно. They've understood they're not the body, but they have not understood their relationship with the super soul. Они понимают, они поняли, что они не не тело, но они не поняли своих отношений с сверхдушой. So their knowledge is not fully perfect. They will have to come back again. They will not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. So Lord Krishna explains real knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. And the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Krishna. И цель знания – предаться Кришне. Баху нам джанма нам анте гьяна вам мам прападьянте. Васа дев сарвами ти са махатма садурлаба. Lord Krishna is saying, after many births and deaths, one will, who's in perfect knowledge will surrender to me. Господь Кришна говорит, после многих рождений и смертей, тот, кто обрел совершенное знание, предастся мне. He knows that I, he, he, he will surrender to Lord Krishna, knowing that Krishna, Vasudev, is everything. Он предастся Кришне, понимая, что Кришна, Vasudev, все. But such a soul is rare. Но такая душа редко встречается. People don't have that determination. Their interest is more to enjoy material life. And they think to enjoy material life is the goal of life. And they just simply want to satisfy the senses. But the problem is, senses are never satisfied. We always want more. You, if you make a lot of money, you always want to make more money. I was in Hong Kong and I went to visit this one young businessman I knew in Hong Kong. And he told me, he said, I made a million dollars out of my business. But then he said to me, he said, I wanted, after I made one million, I wanted to make another million. I wasn't satisfied. So he understood the nature of his mind and senses. He was an intelligent young man. He gave up his business. <laughs> went back to India. To lead a more peaceful, natural life. 
чтобы вести более умиротворенную и естественный образ жизни. Because life in Hong Kong is not peaceful and not natural. Потому что жизнь в Гонконге не умиротворенная и не естественная. In other words, money is not everything. Другими словами, деньги это не все. There's a lot more in life than money. В жизни есть много чего, кроме денег. But people will be people because of no proper intelligence and no good knowledge. They will spend their whole life working, trying to make money, trying to become rich. Но так как люди не используют свой разум, у них нет достаточно знания, они используют свою жизнь, чтобы заработать деньги и стать богатыми. Everyone's trying to make a lot of money and become rich. Almost everyone. А все ли, кто стремится заработать деньги, становятся богатыми? Is everybody rich? Все богаты. Everyone want to get money? Do they all get it? No. Все, кто хотят много денег, получают их? Нет. Everyone has their own karma. We all have the the results of our work. У нас у каждого есть своя карма, результат нашей деятельности. So this body, this body is a field. Это тело, поле. In the the Sanskrit word is kshetra, means a field. На санскрите это звучит как кшетра, значит поле. Just like in Russia, many people have some land, right? You get a piece of land where you can grow some vegetables. В России у многих есть участок какой-то, да, где вы можете выращивать овощи. So somebody will grow corn, somebody else will grow eggplant, somebody else will grow tomato. Кто-то выращивает кукурузу, кто-то баклажаны, кто-то помидоры. Different people, according to what they plant, they will harvest. И в соответствии с тем, что мы посадим, то люди и пожинают. We have a saying in Chinese. На китайском языке есть поговорка. They say, "Zhong do de zhou, zhong gua de gua." The the meaning is, if you plant beans, you will harvest beans. На китайском языке есть поговорка, которая гласит, если вы посадили кукурузу, вы пожнете кукурузу. Если вы посадите дыни, то у вас вырастут дыни. Right. You, if you plant beans, you're not going to harvest melons. So this is the principle of karma. The law of karma. As you sow, the Bible, the Christian Bible says, as you sow, so shall you reap. You do good work, you get good results. You do pious activities, you will enjoy the results. And you do a lot of sinful things, you suffer. Everyone suffers and enjoys according to our past deeds. The body is a field. And somebody's body is Sometimes the land is very good, very fertile, and you can grow things very easily. But some some soil is very bad; you cannot grow anything. So in the same way, our bodies are like that. Someone's got some good karma, and somebody's not. So knowledge is to understand these things. And to understand that higher than the body is the soul. And we have to take care of the need of the soul. That is real knowledge. To understand how to give nourishment to the soul. Srila Prabhupada always gave this story about the bird in the cage. 
sometimes you know the, the lady there's a the lady is alone at home and she feels very lonely she wants some company so she buys a bird a little bird in a cage and she takes the bird home Знаете, например, женщина дома одна, ей скучно, и она покупает себе птичку и приносит ее домой. She thinks the bird will keep me company and will sing to me all day. Она думает, птичка составит мне компанию, будет мне щелетать целый день. We have a bird park. A bird in Hong Kong. We have a bird park. В Гонконге есть птичий парк. And you, you know, you can go there. You can see the birds and. There's some birds they will come and say hello, hello. <laughs> 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 so the old lady she wanted a, a bird to keep the bird at home. She thought bird would be good company for me. <laughs> and she's cleaning the cage and she polished the cage. She made it very nice. She put a mirror there for the bird to look at itself. <laughs> and she put a bell for the bird to, to hear the sound of the bell. But after some time, she, the bird was not singing. And she looked in the cage and she saw the bird was dead. Но через некоторое время она замечает, что птичка перестала щепетать. Она смотрит и видит, что она мертва. Что же произошло? Почему птичка умерла? Это не была старая птичка. Те старые и старые птички, они, конечно, умерли. Это была молодая птичка. Actually, some birds live a very long time. They have birds, they come to temples. There's some temples in South India. The bird comes every day and it will come every day. It's been coming for, for many, many years. Anyway, why did this bird die? Uh, in any case, that she didn't have no freedom. She didn't have freedom. That's why she had died. But uh, she says that um, she it didn't get some food, any food. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah the, it's not that just because it's in the cage that it dies. You can keep birds in cages for a long time. But you have to take care of them. You have to feed them. And they need food, they need water. So she was cleaning the cage. But she never fed the bird. So the same way, we take care of the body and we don't take care of the soul. We spend all the time taking care of the body, the hair and the eyes and the nails and everything. We spend a lot of time and money to make them look nice. Мы тратим очень много времени и денег на волосы, ногти, глаза. А для души мы ничего не делаем. So because we neglect the soul, we don't feel and we don't we don't make proper use of the body. И так как мы пренебрегаем душой, мы используем свое тело неправильно. The human life is so rare, it's so special. Человеческая жизнь это такой редкий дар. And we're so fortunate to have the human form of life. And in the human form of life, we have association with devotees. And with the association of devotees, we can cross over the ocean of birth and death. That is the real goal of life. Это и есть настоящая цель жизни.
We want to be, make a success out of this life. Мы хотим закончить нашу жизнь успешно. Success is not just to make money. Успех это не просто заработать деньги. Success is not just to go to university and get qualifications. Успех не значит просто пойти в университет и получить профессию специальность какую-то. Success is not to work in a big multinational company. Успех не значит работать в большой многонациональной международной компании. The one, what I met this one young lady in Delhi. She told me that she studied very hard to get good marks in her exams. Одна молодая девушка сказала мне в Дели сказала мне, что она так усердно училась, чтобы успешно сдать экзамены. And she wanted to get a job in one of the big companies there in India. Она в Индии хотела получить работу в очень большой компании. So she got it. She she had the interviews, and they took her in the job. She got a job in the company. Она получила эту должность. У нее было собеседование. Она ее приняли. And she told me it was hell. She said it was terrible. Она сказала, это просто ад. Это было ужасно. They, everybody was so nasty and unfriendly with each other. Все такие были отвратительно себя вели друг с другом, не дружелюбным. Everyone wants to get promotion, to get the big position. Все хотели получить продвижение, какое-то положение высокое. To get more money. Получить больше денег. So everybody was not very friendly with each other. Но отвратительно относились друг к другу, не дружелюбно. And there's just so much stress and anxiety all the time. So she understood that this this is not the kind of job I want. She was thinking the job would be so nice, but it was so terrible. And you have to work. Sometimes you get a job, you have to work for wicked and miserly people. Иногда нам приходится работать на очень мелочных людей, и злых людей. And you have to tolerate so many difficulties just to get some little bits of pleasure. И нам приходится терпеть всего, чтобы получить капельку удовольствия. So real knowledge is to understand who I am. Истинное знание это понять, кто я. If we have, if we're still thinking I'm the body, then we're in ignorance. Если мы все еще думаем, что мы являемся этим телом, то мы находимся в невежестве. So Lord Rishabdev in Srimad Bhagavatam, if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, tells about a great king named Rishabdev. Если вы почитаете Srimad Bhagavatam, в ней говорится о великом царе, который называют Эшабхадев. And he had, he had 100 sons. У него было тысячу сыновей. And the sons were very, very good sons. They were very special sons. Очень особенные хорошие сыновья. He was a great man. He was the emperor of the world. He was not just any ordinary king. He was like the emperor. Он был не был каким-то заурядным царем. Он был императором всего мира. So he was going to enter into the forest with his wife. He was going to retire from, give up the throne, and enter into. The renounced, the, or the retired life, where you go into the forest, live in the forest. Он подошел к тому моменту, когда он принял отречение и собрался уйти в лес. So before he retired to the forest, he met with his sons and he gave them instructions. Прежде чем уйти в лес, он встретился со своими сыновьями и дал им наставления. And he told them that there's no need to work hard. For material sense gratification. That sense gratification, the pleasures of the body, are available for even the animals. Even the animals, like the hogs, the pigs, and the dogs. They are in these animals, the pigs. They eat stool, but they—they're thinking they're very happy. They're enjoying. 
и такие животные, как свиньи, они поедают свои испорожнения и думают, что они очень счастливы. There's even a story how one time Indra, the king of heaven, got cursed by his spiritual teacher. Есть одна история о том, как Индра, царь небес, был проклят своим духовным учителем. Because Indra is the king of heaven, he's surrounded by many beautiful women, and the, the heavenly planets is very opulent, hundreds of times more opulent than anything here on this planet. И так как Индра царь небес, его всегда окружают очень красивые женщины, и райские планеты, они в сто раз богаче, чем планеты земные. So sometimes, when you're surrounded by opulence, you can become proud, you can become attached to these things. So Indra, Indra did something wrong. So his guru was, his guru was angry at him and said, I'll teach you a lesson. He said, I curse you to become a pig. <laughs> Go and live in a pig body for some time. <laughs> so Indra was cursed, he had to become a pig. <laughs> so he was in the pig body for some time. And then after some time, Guru came and said, Okay, you've been a pig long enough, now come back. Какое-то время он прошел в теле свиньи, и через некоторое время его гуру пришел и сказал, ну ладно, достаточно уже, ты пробовал в этом теле, пора возвращаться. But Indra said, no, no, I'm happy here. Но Индра сказал, да не, я, мне здесь хорошо, я здесь счастлив. He said, why I will live here, I am very happy here. Зачем мне отсюда уходить, я здесь очень счастлив. I have my pig family. У меня есть моя семья. And we get our pig food every day. Нам, нас кормят еду для свиней. Indra had become very big and fat. Indra and it said farmers coming every day giving us food. I'm enjoy I'm happy here. I don't want to live here. So Guru said, Oh, you think you're happy here, eh? Just a minute, I'll go and get the butcher. So the butcher came with a big knife. Said, where's the big fat pig? <laughs> so that was Indra. So when Indra saw the butcher coming with the big knife, then he turned to his girl and said, no, take me, take me, save me. <laughs> But we should understand sometimes we're in the most horrible, con unpleasant conditions, but we're thinking, no, oh, I'm happy, I'm happy. So Lord Rishabdev was telling his sons, don't be like the animals, like the pigs and the dogs. И Господь Шабхадев говорит своим сыновьям, не будьте как эти животные, собаки и свиньи. Don't just live for eating and sleeping and mating and defending. Не живите ради еды, защиты, самокупления и сна. You have the human life. У вас есть человеческая жизнь. Use it to do some austerity. Используйте ее для аскез. And by austerity, you will purify yourself. And then you will experience real happiness. Not the illusion of happiness which the animals are having. You will experience real happiness, the happiness from within, the happiness of the soul. So that is real knowledge. To understand how to get, awaken our soul. Sometimes we will sing the song Jeev Jago. Jeev Jago means wake up sleeping soul. Jeev Jago means wake up sleeping soul. 
our soul is asleep because of the the maya we're in the lap we're in, just like the child in the lap of the mother the child will go to sleep so our soul is asleep and we're in the lap of maya so we have to wait, shake them up wake up wake up we have to see the need the, 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 the danger of losing this human life. If we again fall back in the lower species, again become an animal, go through many different births and deaths. Then it's a great shame, it's a great waste. There's a story about how Narada Muni, he came to this one man. And he was telling, Narada Muni came to see this one man and told the man, that, you know, come with me. He said, come with me, let's go and we'll go and we'll preach and we'll spread spiritual knowledge everywhere. И народу не сказал этому человеку, пойдем со мной, мы будем ходить везде, распространять духовное знание, проповедовать будем. Он человек сказал, смотри, у меня маленькие дети, семья, я не могу сейчас их оставить. Народу не сказал, хорошо, я приду в другое время. So after a long time, came back and he told them, he said, now, he said, now your children are grown up. He said, you should come with me now. He said, the man said, yeah, my children are grown up, they're married now, but they sleep late. The people will come and they will steal everything from our land. They will steal all our, our rice. Он сказал, да, мои дети выросли, но они спят поздно, и люди могут прийти и что-то своровать с нашей земли, рис воруют. Мне нужно урожай защищать. Если я не буду защищать, то нас все украдут. Narada Muni went away after some time, he came back again and he said to the man, he said, now, he said, what do you want to, why don't you come with me, let's go. We'll go and visit the holy places. But the man said, oh no, he said, I still have to take care for my children. So after some time, Narada Muni went away, after a long time came back again, he could not find the man. But there was a dog, and the dog was barking, and the dog communicated to Narada Muni and said, Narada Muni, it's me, I'm your old friend. I said, oh, you've become a dog. He said, oh my goodness. He said, you know, I, can, I, can, can I take you with me? But the dog said, no, I'm here to guard everything, to protect the property of my children. So Narada Muni went away, came back again. This time the, there was no dog. Found a big snake. This man had become a big snake. So Narada Muni was telling him, said, maybe I, can I take you with me in this, this body, in the body of a snake, can I take you with me? He will, will, will you come with me? But he said, no, no, I'm guarding the property. 
И он сказал, ну могу я в этом теле змеиным с собой забрать, пойдешь со мной? Говорит, нет, я защищ... охраняю собственность. So Narada Muni went and he told the, the people in the house, the men's sons, and he told them there's a big snake in the field out there. So the sons all came with big logs and they found the snake and they beat the snake and killed the snake. И на разгоне пошел к его сыновьям и сказал, у вас там в поле большая змея. Да, они вышли с палками и забили им до смерти ее. They didn't know this is their father. Они не знали, что это их отец. Anyway, они пришли и просто забили змею. So kind of, kind of По всему миру вот такого рода ситуации происходят. So мы так, мы так привязаны к семье. Of course, we don't want to be irresponsible. Конечно, мы не хотим быть безответственными. But we have to understand the, the duty мы of за... human life. Но мы должны понять цель жизни, обязанность жизни. To understand the soul. Понять душу. And the need of the soul is to connect to the supreme soul. И потребность души это связать, связаться с верховным Господом. Chanting Hare Krishna. That means how we can connect our soul to the Supreme Soul. Bhakti Yoga is the process of connecting to the Supreme. Bhakti Yoga is a process with which we can connect with the Supreme Soul. By devotion. Okay, some questions? Yes, there are questions. Хари Кришна, спасибо большое. А мне по вчерашней лекции вопрос не стал задать. Хотела спросить, а как Господь защищает, если преданные болеют, стареют, умирают, происходят различные неприятности, но при этом говорится, что Господь их защищает. В чем заключается Его защита? Спасибо большое. Повторите вопрос вам, да? По вчерашней лекции вопрос. Как, в чем проявляется защита Господа, когда преданный болеет, стареет, с ним случаются неприятные вещи? Как понять, если Господь защищает, то как, как Он защищает, если такое происходит с преданными? Правильно я поняла? Да, да. Thank you very much for your lecture, Maharaj. Um, I wanted to ask the question yesterday, but I didn't have time. Um, we say that Krishna protects us, protects the devotees, but Um, how? Uh, but the devotees, they uh, they are getting old. They have uh, they are suffering from different diseases, and um, different unpleasant things happen uh, with them. So, where is the protection of Krishna in this case? Krishna will protect your Krishna consciousness. Krishna защитит ваше сознание Кришны. He will protect that. That mood of devotion which you are cultivating. Krishna doesn't say I'll protect you from disease and old age and death. Krishna не говорит я защищу я защищаю вас от болезней, старости и смерти. But he will protect our consciousness. Он защищает наше сознание. Whatever advancement we made, you don't lose it. Какое преимущество? А, э, то, чего мы добились, э, мы это не потеряем. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Neha Bikramana Shosti Pratyavayona Vijate. In this endeavor there is no loss or diminution. Krishna говорит в Bhagavad Gita, на этом пути нет потерь. And a little advancement made saves you from the greatest danger. И малейшее продвижение на этом пути спасет вас от великой опасности. So whatever progress you have made in devotional service, that is to your eternal benefit. И какой бы прогресс не 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 получили, не достиг какого бы прогресса вы не достигли на вашем духовном пути, это будет вашей вечной вечным благом. It goes into your spiritual bank account. Это уходит на ваш духовный счет. Your material bank account that's finished with the body. Ваш счет в материальном мире денежный исчезает с потери с 
этого тела. But you have a spiritual bank account. У вас также есть духовный денежный счет. Ее духовный счет. Every time you sit and chant your rounds every day, you're putting money into your spiritual bank account. И каждый день, когда вы читаете, повторяете святые имена, вы кладете и путем мали. Вы выходите таким образом, как деньги на ваш духовный счет. You're putting your wealth to God. The real money. Истинные деньги. The wealth of devotional activity. Богатство, преданное, деятельности преданного служения. So that protection is there. Вот в чем заключается защита. And we have many examples. Существует много примеров. Дурвасса Муни was giving trouble to Maharaj Ambarish. Дурвасса Муни подчинял беспокойство Махараджу Амбариши. Maharaj Ambarish didn't. He didn't do anything. Maharaj Ambarish nothing did. But he had his mind fixed on Krishna. No, он, но его ум был всегда сосредоточен на Кришне. So Krishna protected him. И Кришна защитил его. And Krishna, what Krishna punished Durvasa Muni. Krishna наказал Durvasa Muni. Durvasa Muni had to come and apologize to Maharaj Ambarish. Durvasa Muni пришлось прийти и извиниться перед Махараджем Ambarishем. And we saw Prahlad Maharaj. И Прохлад Махарадж. How much Prahlad went through? Через сколько пришлось Прохладе пройти? His father trying to kill him in so many ways. Разными способами его отец пытался убить. And Prahlad didn't do anything. Прохлад ничего не делал. He didn't pray to Krishna to protect him. Он не молился Кришне о защите. But Krishna's in the heart. Но Кришна в его сердце. And Krishna arranged to protect his devotee. И Кришна организовывает все так, чтобы защитить своего преданного. Дропади was protected by Krishna. Кришна защитил Дропади. They tried to they tried to disgrace her by taking off her sari in the assembly of so many men. Они хотели обесчестить ее, хотели снять с нее сари перед столь большим количеством людей. But she became glorious. By showing her chastity. No, она была прославлена, показывая свою твумудрие. Lord Krishna protected her by coming as the unlimited sari. Krishna защитил ее, проявившись бесконечным сари. So they were trying to put shame on her, but she became more glorious. Не хотели присудить ее, но опозорить ее. Но вместо этого она была прославлена еще больше. This is how Krishna takes care of his devotees. Вот так вот таким образом Кришна защищает своих преданных. Krishna is bhakta vatsala. Krishna. He reciprocates with his devotees. Krishna bhakta vatsala. Он отвечает своим преданным. He doesn't reciprocate with people on the basis of knowledge. He's not jnana bhakta vatsala. And he's he's not Gyana Bhatsalad. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, that won't impress Krishna. Krishna не вдохновит, не впечатлит то, насколько большими знаниями вы обладаете. Он не Гьяна Бхатсала. And he's not Karma Bhatsala. It doesn't matter what work you do. И он не Karma Bhatsala. Ему все равно, какой деятельностью вы занимаетесь. It's only Bhakti which will attract. Его привлекает только Бхакти. So Krishna said. Kunti apriti janihi name bhakta pranashati. The devotee, one who has devotion, will never perish. Krishna говорит, мой преданный никогда не погибнет. You have to have devotion. У вас вы должны обладать преданностью. Then Krishna takes care. Тогда Кришна позаботится. Thank you very much. Тут говорилось о, я постараюсь выразить свою мысль, говорилось о духовном банке. Мне интересно, допустим, счет считается на момент смерти, или вот допустим, был преданный, хороший, что-то делал, там все делал, потом он пал. И, допустим, к моменту смерти он какой-то падший преданный, который очень чем-то плохим занимается. 
аннулируется ли его счет? Mm -hmm. э, вот этот, получается, его какие-то плохие поступки, допустим, его духовный счет э, убирают какие-то баллы, mm -hmm. допустим. Главное не пытать, пытать сейчас. Да, и э, получается, на момент смерти засчитываются баллы или вообще за все, что он сделал? Короче, убираются ли баллы, если mm -hmm. он сделал? Вот вопрос. Мы говорили о духовном банко, о банковском счете. Если, например, преданный в течение жизни стал совершать какие-то плохие поступки, то есть он заработал какое-то благо, а потом стал совершать плохие поступки, аннулируется ли это плохими поступками, да? В момент, что я запуталась, но к моменту смерти. Или что ты имела в виду? Я имела в виду, что к его смерти, допустим, если он совершал плохие поступки, у него стало меньше баллов его духовных, чем а, было. В момент смерти, если он совершал плохие поступки, уменьшается ли количество заработанных духовных баллов? Так, да? um, the question is, we were talking about the spiritual bank account that the devotee, he, uh, during the process of the devotional service, he uh, put on his bank account some um, real Uh, spiritual um, account uh, some benefit and um, if he for example uh, gives up his spiritual way and um, makes simple things and to the time of the death uh, uh, does this simple did or do this simple deed counteract the pious activity the spiritual account is the spiritual account um, became becomes a zero reduced reduces yes right yes you do good deeds that's putting money in the bank and you do sinful things is taking the money out um but she was talking about spiritual activity да, если вы делаете хорошие дела, вы получаете их на счет. Но если вы делаете плохие, то у вас что-то списывается. So you do devotional activities that's for your benefit. Вы занимаетесь преданным служением, это для вашей выгоды. When you engage in sinful activities, it's going to bring us problems. Вы занимаетесь греховной деятельностью, повлечет за собой проблемы, реакции. Это был закон природы. Карма, простите, карма. Можно, можно добавить к этому еще? Мы это сам синтезируем. Капитализировать. Я слышал, что надо медитация. Да, до конца добить, чтобы что решающим то, о чем ты думаешь в момент оставления тела. То есть как бы это готовит тебя, вся жизнь это готовит тебя к смерти, чтобы у тебя последнее твое решение, о чем ты подумаешь, тем ты, собственно, и станешь. Следующая жизнь. Вот это как бы вот. I want to add something uh, to this uh, talk that I read that um, during the whole of our life we are preparing ourselves to the death and and the thing we and what about what we see what we're thinking about at the moment of the death we will become it. Yeah. Then. That's what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Whatever you think at the end of life, that will carry you to the next body. So what do we think at the time of the we will think of the things which have occupied our life? It's not that the, at the end of life we can just simply think, oh, I will think of Krishna at the end of life. If we haven't practiced thinking of Krishna throughout the life, we won't be able to think of him at the end of life. So we have to practice, you have to prepare for that. Okay. 
just like Dhruva Maharaj. He described how he was at the end of his life he had gone to the Himalayas and he was living in the Himalayas. And then the airplane came from Vaikuntha. And so he got in the airplane and went back to God. But as he was getting into the airplane, death appeared in front of him. But he just stood on the shoulders and got into the air. He was not afraid. There's another devotee also. There was this one devotee, Tukaram. He was a great devotee and the airplane came from Vaikuntha to take him back to the spiritual world. So he got in the airplane and he told his wife, come, let's go to the spiritual world. He wanted his wife to go with him. But she said, no, no, I don't want to go. She, was, she, she had not practiced. He had practiced, she had not. He was going to take her, but she didn't want to go. So he, he went on his own. And Dhruva Maharaj, when Dhruva Maharaj was going back to Godhead, he wanted his mother to go. He said, wait, I can't go without my mother, she should also go. But when he looked at her, they said, no, he, your mother's over there, she's in another airplane, she's also going. His, his mother had practiced, she wanted to go. And she went back to God with her son. Yes. Any other question? Hare Krishna. У меня вопрос в колеснице. Тело сидит пассажиром. Душа конкретно вот сегодня было сказано или энергия чит. То есть клон некой души, которая находится в материальном теле, потому что сама душа, ее сварута духовно, она спит, насколько она вот есть источники, да? Пытаюсь в этом вопросе разобраться. А, а может я уточню, в колеснице душа или энергия чита, что-то вы нам добавили? Ну, ум, разум, ложное эго и чит. Энергия чит это некий, ну, как бы, духовный, так сказать. Потому что душа, у нее своя сварупа, то есть ну, как... Да, она же вообще она, душа она, она, она вообще в другом, да. Itself or some cheat energy, because we know that uh, the soul has its own svarupa and it's not here in this world, but it's still he's still in the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to understand. We're giving simply an example to understand the relationship mm -hmm. between the mind, and the senses, and the intelligence, and the soul. Но нужно понять, что это дается как пример, чтобы понять отношения разума, э, ума, чувств, тела и души э, между собой, как они друг к другу, как они относятся. Это просто дается как пример. So the soul is directing. The soul is like the passenger. It, it's carried by the mind, by, by the, the driver. We said the intelligence. То есть душа как пассажир и 
ее везет э, ум и разум. So the soul is on the chariot, it's on the body, it's in the body. But the soul will also leave the body, give up one body, take another body. It can remain in the material world and take another body, or it can go to the spiritual world. If it will go to the spiritual world, then it won't need another body. Because the soul, as you said, the soul has its Swarupa. That Swarupa is revealed when the soul goes to the spiritual world. But to, un to reveal the Swarupa of the soul, we have to get rid of the material coverings. Чтобы проявить свару по души, нам нужно избавиться от материального покрытия. We have to get rid of all the false ego. We have to get rid of the 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 modes of nature. Нам нужно избавиться от ложного эго и его природы. Then you can understand this свару. Тогда вы сможете понять свару. We we can see uh, Dhritarashtra and even Maharaj Yudhisthira. You know, when we were just reading today in the Bhagavatam about Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was preparing to go back to Godhead. So he he'd given up everything. He'd given up all the material wealth and the position. All the jewelry and the ornaments and the weapons. And he, then he was giving up the attachment, the, the different mental attachments which are there. He was purifying his mind. Getting it free of any kind of attachment to the material world. And then he was that way he could experience his spiritual nature. In some particular body, a spiritual body as a servant of Krishna. Right. Everyone has a swarup, we have a swarup, it can it will be in one of the five rasas. Neutrality, servitude, uh, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal life. So everyone has one of these answers with Krishna. So that Swarupa is realized by the pure soul. That is actually liberation. To understand your eternal relationship. But before you can know that, we have to get rid of every all, all the covering. So it's not e not so easy thing to be liberated. So what? To be a liberated soul is not very easy. <laughs> you have to practice a lot. And then you have to be willing to give up everything. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, he did it. Because he'd heard Krishna had departed from the world, so he thought there's no reason for me to stay here. So he, he gave up everything. The same way Dhritarashtra gave up everything. He went to the forest. Okay. So, what's up? Good. Any other questions?
Еще вопросы? Еще как вы по сегодняшней лекции. Вопрос про ответственность. Если человек, я просто так вижу, если человек не научился в материальной жизни принимать ответственность за себя, за окружающих, то когда он приходит в общество преданным, то чаще всего он здесь не берет ответственность за себя. Started to take responsibility in the material life. So when he comes to this um, spiritual society, uh, he also is not willing to take resp any responsibility. Может быть, в истории с Нарада Муни и вот этим мужчиной, который был очень ответственный, uh, ему нужно было <laughs> как-то научиться находить грань между вот какой-то вот ответственностью в миру и ответственностью за свою духовную практику. Maybe in that story uh, about Narada Muni and that person who uh, didn't want to go with him, um, the person should have uh, learned to take a balance between the taking responsibility and между принятием ответственности чем? And there's and responsibility between um, the responsibility of protecting his material life and the responsibility for his spiritual life. Maybe he should he he should have studied uh, to find uh, to to balance between them. Well, that's the same argument which Daksha gave. Даксха Даксха was complaining to Narada Muni that my sons have to fulfill their material life. They have to put, they have to enter into family life and become good family men. Then only they can renounce. Даксха приводил аргументы, что его сыновья не нужны не нужно устраивать свою семейную жизнь. Narada Muni had oh, itching, you didn't finish. <laughs> Narada Muni had he, the, there were sons of Daksha, there were ten thousand sons of Daksha, and Daksha was going to get because Daksha is a Prajapati, so he wants to populate the universe. So he had ten thousand sons. So he was going to get all of his sons married and they would help him populate the universe. Так как Дакша являлся Праджапати, у него была возможна миссия населять планету, населять материальный мир, и у него было 10 тысяч сыновей, и у него был план, Дакша был план, что они женятся и также будут платить потомство. So the system is, before the young man gets married, they first of all go and do tapashya, they go and do some austerity and purify their self, so that they can become qualified for family life. Even today, in Buddhist countries, you'll find the young men, before they get married, they'll become a monk in the Buddhist monastery, and they'll live as a monk for a few months, and then they'll go and get married. Даже сейчас в буддийских странах мы можем увидеть, что молодые люди перед тем, как вступить в брак, они уходят в монастырь и живут какое-то время как монахи. First they should be a monk, and that, then, then they'll make a good husband. То есть сначала ты должен быть монахом, а потом хорошим мужем. That's the, the thing. Вот такое вот мнение. So Daksha's sons all had to go and do austerity. They went to do their austerity. But Narada Muni saw them doing austerity and he thought, hey, they're such nice young men. Why do they need to get married? Let them remain. Let them be. They can already go back to Godhead. They don't need to go through family life. <laughs> Совершать аскезы. Они уже готовы уйти в духовный мир. Зачем вам нужно жениться и проходить через всю эту семейную жизнь? Они уже готовы 
Uh, so Narada Muni preached to them, and, and they all thought, yeah, he's right, why we should go back? They didn't go back. И тогда Нарада Муни стал им проповедовать, и они подумали, а он прав, зачем нам возвращаться? И они не вернулись. So Jaksha heard his sons had all gone off to become perfect, to become renouncia. They renounced the material world. А когда Дакша услышал, что все его сыновья решили отречься от материального мира. So, he had more sons. Dakshya had more sons. У Дакши было потом еще больше сыновей. And again, the, the second group of sons, they went to do some austerity before them getting married. And they were doing their austerity, Narada Muni saw them, and he thought, very nice young man. <laughs> Why they need to go in the family life? <laughs> so he preached to them and told them, he said, you know, your older brothers, they didn't go back. <laughs> you should follow your older brothers. <laughs> so they thought, yeah, why not? <laughs> they didn't go back. So when Daksha heard, he was very upset. And he blamed Narada Muni. Just like he's saying, these people, they have to be responsible. The material, you have to be a responsible material and then you can only become responsible and spiritual. Люди должны быть ответственны в материальной жизни, тогда они смогут быть ответственны в духовной. So Daksha was saying like that to Narada Muni. He was blaming Narada Muni. Я обвинял там Нараду Муни, он говорил говорил такие слова. So he cursed Narada Muni. И потом проклял его. You will not be able to. You will not stay in any one place for any length. Of, you can only stay three days in one place. Narada Muni thought, very nice. Very good. I won't get attached to any place. And Daksha. He thought, if I have more sons, Narada Muni will take them all away. So he said, I won't have sons. Next time, we will just have daughters. <laughs> so he produced many daughters. <laughs> and got them married. <laughs> to populate the universe. <laughs> So, so it's not that you have to be responsible in the material world. Narada Muni was not responsible. But he's a great devotee. There are devotees in every ashram. One can be in any ashram. He may be single, he may be married. That's, that's not important. What is important is that they're surrendered to surrender to Krishna. That is the responsibility. Some some of the devotees in our we see some of the acharyas. The great Lord Chaitanya gave up his young wife. She was only sixteen. Lord Chaitanya gave up his wife to take sannyasa. And he had an old mother, Mother Sachi. Was that irresponsible? Well, why did he give them up? Because he has to deliver the world. 
If he will stay at home, he can only deliver his wife and his mother. But by leaving home, he delivered the whole world. So for the higher purpose. So sometimes some of the acharyas they, they never married, like uh, Naratam Das Thakur, he was a brahmachari. But Srinivas Acharya, he was married. He had two wives. We see Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he had one first wife died, he remarried. And he had many eleven sons, eleven children. But he is he is the seventh Goswami. And then you have people like uh, Gorkishor that well Gorkishor does Babaji, he'd been a Grihasta for some time. But his wife died and he became renowned. You have Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami never married. Rupa and Sanata, they must have been married. We don't know, I never heard, but they must have been married when they were young men. Рупа и Санатана, возможно, они были женаты, я никогда не слышал об этом, they, когда были молоды. They came to Vrindavan in their older age. Они пришли в Вриндаван уже в преклонном возрасте. They are Они отреклись. Anyway, your point is taken that if somebody, if somebody is responsible in the material world, then they can also be good responsible, they can take responsibility in the spiritual sense. But sometimes we do find people who had no quality, no experience of material life and never had any responsibility, they can, be, they can learn how to take responsibility. Некоторые люди, они, у них не было какого-то опыта такого материальной жизни и какой-то ответственности, но они могут научиться этому, принимать ответственность. Потому что приход в сознание Кришны — это второе рождение. So they're, they're, they're они тренируются. People are not often not trained in responsibility. <coughs> they don't know how to take care of their family. They don't know how to look after the interests of their children. So, Krishna consciousness is the beginning of real responsible life. Understanding I'm a servant of Krishna. The thing is very difficult to people to get out of material consciousness. But to get so attached. Thank you very much. Krishna, in continuation of this topic, so why is Lord Chaitanya didn't let uh, to Brahma Kuma, Kuma to leave everything and follow him? Because the Brahmana Kurma had a wife and family. 
and the Brahmana Kurma, it was more, it was a very uh, spontaneous mood of renunciation. He hadn't been cultivating that mood until he met Lord Chaitanya. And we see Lord Chaitanya gave similar instruction to Raghunath Das in the beginning. Raghunath had a very nice wife and a lot of money, was very rich. And he wanted to join Lord Chaitanya. But Lord, Lord Chaitanya told him, go home, but don't be a a foolish person. Behave like a normal person. And go home and keep Krishna in your heart. So Lord Chaitanya didn't encourage him immediately. But when when Lord, when Raghunath went to Lord Nityananda, then Lord Nityananda gave him blessings. So you want to renounce, you have to go through the spiritual teacher. That's the instruction, you don't go first to Krishna. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna. And the Brahmin from Kurmakshetra is wanting to renounce the world. So Krishna talks, no, you stay. But his inst instruction is very important for everyone. Become a guru. You stay, tell everyone about Krishna, become guru. Amara Gaya Guru Hana Tarayadesh. Lord Chaitanya said, by my order, you become a spiritual teacher. So he didn't say, you don't need to become a sannyasi, but you should become a guru. <coughs> and you can stay at home and be a guru. <coughs> Any other questions? I always about the questions in the chat or not. What? Shall we ask about the questions in the chat? Oh, in the chat? Is there a question? There is one question. No. Only one question. A вопрос о Байчирана. Харе Кришна, Гуру Махарадж, примите мои поклоны. Я уже более 12 лет не ем мясо. Лет шесть назад запахи готовой еды с мясом не вызывали желания это съесть, но были вполне приятны. А последние четыре года запахи подобной еды вызывают отвращение, как испражнение, даже хуже. Вопрос. Это говорит о том, что происходит очищение ума, или это я психологически убедил, что я убедил свое тело, что это не та еда, которую стоит есть? Абачара. I feel disgusting smelling uh, this food. Does it mean that uh, the purification of mind, uh, that, this is, that this is a purification of mind, or I uh, have persuaded myself on the bodily level, uh, or I have just persuaded myself on the body level, or, just, or is it a perfection of mind? That he feels disgusted? Um, it's more the association. Because you have not been taking meat 
So naturally something is something else different from what you're used to. Потому что вы уже употребляете мясо, и это уже стало неестественным тому, чему вы привыкли. It doesn't necessarily indicate purification. Это не обязательно указывает на очищение. Of course, it's good that you you're not you're you're not attracted. Конечно, это хорошо, что вы не привлечены, не привязаны к потреблению мяса. We should certainly hope you're not attracted. Мы, конечно же, надеемся, что вы не привлекаетесь. But it doesn't necessarily indicate purification. Но это не обязательно указывает на очищение. The real purification is when you're attracted to taste prasada. Истинное очищение, когда вы привлекаетесь прасадам. Whatever form of prasada. В любой форме прасад. Спасибо, просад привлекает. Thank you, I'm very attractive, attracted uh, with Prasadam. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada. Jai. Thank you very much. Bhakti Vrindavan Singh Maharaj. Jai.